everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the zigzag pip stitch. Now the zigzag pip stitch looks fantastic. It's fully reversible, is awesome, awesome stitch. However, please bear in mind, it is a four row repeat and definitely one that requires your concentration. So if you are looking for simple stitches, this one might not be the stitch for you, but if you're an adventurous beginner and you're happy to just jump on in there, then definitely give this stitch a shot. To begin, pop a slip knot onto your hook. Now the pattern multiple for the zigzag pip stitch is four plus two. Now what that means is you're going to chain in multiples of four, 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 until the project is as wide as you want it to be, then add two extra chains right at the very end. I'm just going to be making a small sample today, so I'm going to go ahead and chain 22. Once you have the correct amount of chains, for row one, we're going to be working into the second chain from the hook. Now this loop on your hook does not count as anything. You only want to count these completed chains hanging down. So one, two, and into that second chain, we're going to place a single crochet stitch. Chain one, skip a chain and place a single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in the next. Repeat that all the way down the length of your chain. Now, if you were working this in a solid color, you would continue with this same yarn for the next rows. However, I want to change color and have it alternating like in my sample over here. So I'm going to step backwards one tiny step to change color. So this final single crochet I did, I'm just going to undo that one. And to change color, Set your hook as if you're going to do your single crochet and draw up a loop. And then instead of yarning over to finish a stitch, bring in your new color, yarn over, leave a tail for weaving in and draw that through the stitch. So you're ready to begin the second row with your new color. As I say, if you want to continue in the same color or you're using a variegated yarn, you do not need to do this step. Now I'm just going to trim off this blue I was working with. You will have lots of ends if you are changing color every single row like I did on this, but I think it's very effective, the final outcome. Personal preference. So for row two, we're going to chain three and turn. Now we're going to be working into the chain one spaces in between your single crochets of the row below. So into the chain one space, not the single crochets themselves. And into this first chain one space, we're going to pop a double crochet. Now this chain three and that double crochet count as a double crochet two together. We're going to be doing a lot of those working along this second row. So chain one, and we're going to work a proper double crochet two together. And we're going to start one leg in the chain space we just worked in, and we're going to end it in the next chain space along, so over here. So to begin your double crochet two together, yarn over, insert your hook back into that same chain space where you just worked your double crochet, draw up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two, and then stop. You'll have two loops remaining on your hook, 
but ignore these for now. We're going to finish the double crochet two together in this next chain one space. So yarn over, go into the next chain one space, drop a loop, you'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over, draw through two, and when you have three loops remaining, yarn over and draw through all three loops. That is your double crochet two together. Chain one, and we're going to repeat those exact same steps, starting the first leg where you just placed your last stitch and then ending it in the next chain one space. So yarn over, go into the same chain one space where you just finished the second leg of your last double crochet two together. Begin it, then end it in the next chain one space. Then chain one. Repeat this down these chain spaces. Begin your double crochet two together in the same place where you just ended and finish it in the next chain one space. You're creating these inverted V's as you go along and chain one in between. As you reach the end of the work, you'll complete your final double crochet two together and you'll notice there's no more chain spaces to work anymore. You've only got this one remaining one that you just finished in here and then you have your single crochet from the row below. So to end row two, chain one and begin your double crochet two together in the same chain space that you just ended. And then place the final leg of it into the top of the single crochet from the row below. You may need to rotate your work round to spot it at the end there, but finish the second leg in the top of that single crochet instead. Now I'm going to be changing colour again, so rather than yarn over and pull through with this colour, I'm going to bring back my bright blue. Draw your new yarn, if you're changing colour, through those remaining three loops, ready to begin row three. For row three, we're going to chain one and turn. Now place a single crochet into the top of this double crochet two together that we finished on. So literally where you've just chained from this very first stitch, pop a single crochet in there, right into the top. Mine's a little bit stretched because of course I changed color. And then place a single crochet into the chain one space in between your legs from the row below. So we're starting with two single crochet stitches. Then chain one, skip your double crochet two together and single crochet into the chain one space in between them. Chain one, skip the top of your double crochet two together, single crochet into the chain space on the other side. You're going to repeat this down the row, chain one, skip your double crochet two together, single crochet into the chain one space after it.
Once you reach your final chain space at the end here, pop your single crochet in, and then we are going to place a single crochet into the top of the chain three from the row below. So if you rotate your work a little bit, you'll see you've got your three chains and then your double crochet, which counted as a two together. Place your single crochet into the top of the chain three. Now again, I'm going to be changing color. If you're not, just complete your stitch as normal. But skip this double crochet, no chaining, just end with a single crochet into the top of the chain three. Change color at that, this point if you wish. As I say, you'll have a lot of tails, so you've got to be committed to this changing color every row lark. <laughs> For row four, chain three and turn. Now we're going to be doing our double crochet two together again, but for row four, we're going to start the first leg into the top of this same stitch where you just chained from. So yarn over and go back into that stitch where you just chained. And then we're going to finish the leg the second leg in the next chain one space. So ignore your single crochet and leap straight into the next chain one space. Then complete your double crochet two together. So you've started with the chain three, then immediately leapt into a double crochet two together. Now for the rest of this row until the very end, we're going to chain one. And just as we did before, start the first leg of your double crochet two together in the same chain space as you just ended and then finish it in the next chain space along. Chain one and repeat. Once you reach the end, you'll notice that you have run out of chain spaces when you finish your final double crochet two together using just the chain spaces alone. You'll be confronted with these two single crochet over here hanging out. So to deal with that, we're going to chain one, start your double crochet two together in this same chain one space. And then we're going to finish in this very last single crochet of the end of the row. So skip this one here and pop the second leg right into this very end stitch. Complete your double crochet two together and then do not chain one and immediately pop a double crochet into that exact same stitch. Now, of course, I need to change color, so let me just step back one. I got so involved telling you what to do, I forgot I was changing color every other row. So I'm just gonna go ahead, undo that last step of my final stitch there, and I'm going to yarn over with my new color. Which goes to show, I can't always crochet and talk at the same time. <laughs> especially on a stitch like this that requires a tiny bit more concentration. So for row five, we're going to chain one and turn. And place a single crochet in this exact same stitch where you just chained from. Now chain one. Skip your double crochet two together and single crochet into the chain space in between them. Chain one, skip your cluster, your double crochet two together, single crochet into the chain space next to them. Repeat this all the way along. Chain one, skip your Vs from below, 
single crochet into the chain one space in between them. Row five is my favorite row. <laughs> Once you reach the end of your row and you've got no more spaces in between your double crochet two togethers, you're going to chain one, skip this double crochet two together at the end here and end with a single crochet into the top of the chain three from the row below. This would be the point at which you change color if you are completely mad and following my every other row. <laughs> Then you'll be ready to start the next row. So the zigzag pip stitch is a four row repeat. From this point onwards, you'd simply repeat rows two, three, four, and five over and over again until the project is the length that you want it to be. Now this is where those chapters along the bottom of my video come in super duper handy. You can just click on row two, three, four and five for an instant reminder of how those rows were done. This is definitely a trust the process stitch. It requires a little bit of concentration and this two row changing color every other row, yes, it gives you an absolute ton of ends, which you could of course knot and incorporate as a fringe, so like some tassel fringing, but it is so effective using two colors. It really highlights these double crochet two together rows and is definitely worth that extra little bit of effort that's involved with all the ends. As I said though, you definitely do not need to change color every other row. I simply did it so you could recreate what I've got here rather than using one solid color. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the zigzag pip stitch. Please do let me know in the comments down below what you think of this stitch. Is it one you've used before? Is it far too complicated for you and you can't be dealing with it? Or is it something that you are definitely gonna try after seeing this? Please let me know. And until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.